Well, hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you two different approaches to solving a one-dimensional collision problem. In this particular example, will be inelastic. So, in the language of collisions, the inelastic ones are ones where the objects stick together after the collision, and elastic ones are ones where they bounce apart and separate. So, what I like about inelastic ones is that if you're asked a question like, what is the final speed? You only have to find one value because they must share a common speed if they're stuck together. So in the problem that you read on the screen here, I've just made up a couple different examples. I've thrown some masses and velocities in. This could take lots of different forms. Um, and the approach I'm going to show you works for both inelastic or elastic, but I think it's just easier to start with the inelastic ones. So the first approach I'd like to take is one that um, I actually learned from the website called physicsclassroom.com, which is what I used for my first year course. And um, the method there is known as a momentum table. And it's just a nice way to organize the information in a problem. And usually you're able to see uh, pretty quickly how to find what you're, what you're asked for. So when you set up a momentum table, in this situation, um, we have two objects. And so each object is going to have its own line on the momentum table. So Make sure you can see all of this. So in the momentum table, we're going to have a line for the 6 kilogram object and another line for the 4 kilogram object. And then there'll be a line down here for the total of the system. That's the two objects combined. Give a little space for each one. And what you're going to be putting on your chart is momentum values. Be careful that you don't put velocity values in. That's an easy mistake to make. And we're going to look before the collision occurs and after the collision occurs. And what's important to know about a collision is that for situations where you don't have any forces from outside your system acting on it. So we usually ignore air resistance, friction. Uh, we can't have people pushing or pulling on things while the collision is occurring. Then we can be sure that the momentum of the system will be conserved. And that's an important idea. In fact, I consider it one of the most important ideas in all of physics is the concept known as the conservation of momentum. So while the momentum can shift from one part of the system to the other, as we'll see in this situation here, the total of the system has to remain the same. And that's the, what we call being conserved. So if we just start accounting here, this is really just sort of an accounting procedure. So we start with the six kilogram object moving rightward at three meters per second. Now you do have to know that momentum is the product of your mass times your velocity. You also have to know that velocities can be positive or negative. My convention is to call the rightward direction positive in almost every situation. And I picked easy numbers here, so we don't really need a calculator to do this. That's 18 units of momentum. I'm going to have all my units in my standard unit of kilograms, meters per second. That way I don't need to write it into each box. And then we see that the 4 kilogram object is moving leftward. So right away when I see that, I know that before the collision occurs, I'm going to assign it to a negative momentum. And it's a 4 kilogram object and a speed of 1 meter per second. So that's just a negative 4. So now that I have each individual part, I can total them up. And I get a total of 14 units of momentum for the two combined. Now here's where the concept of conservation comes in. I know if I start with 14 units of momentum, I have to end up with a total of 14 units of momentum. They're going to be divided differently, but I'm still going to have a total of 14. So there's a couple of approaches you can use now. One is to figure out a proportion. So if they each have to have the same speed and one has one and a half times the mass of the other, like six is to four, then it also has one and a half times as much momentum as the other. But I think dealing with proportions might be a little confusing here. So I'm going to take a different approach, and that is to find the speed that this combination must have. If you can picture a six and a four kilogram object now stuck together, that's a 10 kilogram object. 
that has 14 units of momentum. So I'm going to take that total momentum divided by the total combined mass, and I was kind of nice to you here. So 14 kilograms meters per second divided by 10, and that's why I was nice to you. I gave you 10 kilograms. That means they're moving with a 1.4 meters per second after the collision. And notice we have a positive number there. That tells me that it's moving in the positive direction, which was the same way that the big object was moving initially. So now, since I know each of their masses, and now I know their velocities, I can just multiply that velocity times each individual mass. I did this earlier, and I got 8.4 units of momentum for the big one and the other 5.6 and that is a ratio of 6 to 4 or uh, 1 and a half to 1 um, but that's how much momentum each of them has we were only asked for their final velocity we could have actually stopped right here because we had solved our problem that we were asked but sometimes you'll be asked for momentum and I kind of like to finish the table once we've got it started so that's one approach. There's another approach that I guess um, a lot of you are more sophisticated problem solvers. You may not need this crutch of a, of a momentum table. So you could write it out algebraically. And so conservation of momentum just says that all the momentum at the beginning is equal to all the momentum at the end. So we could write the momentum of the 6 kilogram cart, and I would just write it symbolically this way added to the momentum of the 4 kilogram cart, that would be m4 times its initial velocity, has to equal the total momentum of the combination. So for these inelastic ones, what I would do is I would combine the masses here as one factor, and then they have a common final velocity here. So what we would do is we would algebraic I, used, I like to use the word algebra when I'm solving for one of my symbols for VF. But I think what I'll do, just because I don't have a lot of space left and I'd like to wrap this up, I would show you how these numbers would go in. And I'm just putting the same numbers in that came out of the problem. I'm going to watch out for my signs, positives and negatives. So here's where the first negative sign comes in because it's moving leftward. And then over here, I would have the 6 kilograms plus the 4 kilograms, and then VF. So again, you're doing the same thing here on one line that you do in the table there. Um, but I, I just like the table. I think it helps organize the information very nicely. So I'll let you kind of take a look at that. And really, every collision problem can be done the same way, whether it's um, elastic, and I'm going to show it in another video what the elastic ones look like. Um, but the process is, is pretty much the same. So pick whichever way works for you. Um, make sure you can kind of make sense of it. And then just maybe stick with that as you're, as you're doing your problem. So we'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.